Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special, special edition of Hospitality Marketplace. I am here today with Jan Chin, who is the, the Senior Product Marketing Manager of Ideas. Welcome, Jan. Nice to have you here. Hi, Federica. Hi, Federica. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for, for coming here. Now we will have uh, yeah, a short interview with us. And uh, I am really curious. I know that you have been a strong advocate for hotel forecasting. Mm. And uh, yeah, my question is, why spend resources on forecasting instead of relying on the books, uh, which many hotels uh, still rely on? That's something I truly am passionate about, Federica. And um, thanks for asking that question. I think a lot of for a lot of hotels still do not do forecasting to the levels that they should be. Um, with forecasting, the hotels are then given the ability to have foresight, and with foresight, looking into a crystal ball, this enables the businesses to alter their fate. If they know that it's a certain period that the occupancy is going to be low, um, that sometimes the on the books will not reflect, they then have the ability to then do something about it. So, by doing so, they then know what is the right uh, what are the right actions they need to take um, to be able to mitigate some of these losses or even to yield um, ultimately they're here to grow profit so that forecast will enable that profit growth yeah that that's interesting and yeah let me play a little bit the devil's advocate uh, and what if uh, the forecast is wrong uh, wouldn't that mean that uh, uh, bad decisions and ultimately also cost revenues you're right. If a forecast is not done right, there is that very, there is a risk that the hotels can then make a wrong decision. If they're anticipating that the hotel is going to be full, but they're pricing low, then this ultimately means that they're going to lose out on the average rate performance against the competitors or just simply put, leave money on the table. So there's a very high importance of how the forecast is done. The methodology is important. And this is where we start looking at forecast performance versus forecast accuracy. So the question here is in a closed loop environment, we're looking at a forecast that can adjust itself based on how demand is changing. They are things that no system in the world can be able to, to detect. And it's important that the forecast is always updated to reflect the most recent trends. For example, you do not want to look at, for example, I think the most common example I can think of is uh, in historically, hotels look at the forecast at the beginning of the month, and then at the end of the month, they compare it against the actuals and see what their forecast accuracy variance is. But that does not take into account how trends can change within that month. Cancellations can happen, flight disruptions can happen, weather can change, um, a whole array of things can happen. So the key here is to make sure that the forecast methodology also incorporates the uncertainties and changes according to those demand trends. Well, I couldn't agree more, really. And uh, we know that forecast is really, really important. And according to your experience, uh, what can be done to make a forecast more robust, uh, relevant, and perhaps more accurate? So there's a lot of data that any hotel can use. In the most recent times, we've seen hotels using data such as when borders are opening and closing. And this was, of course, during the most recent pandemic. Um, now it's the hotels are looking at how their competitors are pricing even more so because pricing historically has been a good indicator of group business within or, or compression within a certain market. And when there's compression, it means that a hotel would have to react. And therefore, the competitor's pricing is something that they, it's a piece of data that they, they pay a lot of attention to. But to simply put it, I think the most, the best way to get a forecast robust or to make it uh, let's say in, in this case, more perform better is to get what's most relevant to each hotel. Each hotel has its own unique business, its own market mix, its own competitors, and its own different products. So using competitor data, such as what is the hotel down the street pricing for the leading category or the suites or the villa, or um, if you're a caravan park, the, the, the tent, those kind of data are good. Those kind of data sets are good indicators of what's happening in the market and therefore influence that hotel's forecast or that property's forecast. Those that are a little bit more advanced can use market data from the likes of our friends at TravelClick. They have Demand360, which shows you market data, the, um, 
di that's directly linked to their competitors or hotels competitors that can be incorporated in there as well to give good idea of whether it's a compression or a, a lull in the marketplace and that in turn will enable the hotels to then decide do they go on a occupancy building mode or a yielding mode by increasing the prices so these are just simply some examples of the data that they can use and incorporate into that methodology what's important here is there has to be a clear impact um, or a direct correlation or a clear correlation that that data has on that hotel's business and most importantly that the hotel can derive some sort of actionable strategy from it. Yeah, right. And I really like that you talked about uh, market data because we are living in times of extreme and increasing uh, uncertainty mm -hmm. and the demand is really changing. And uh, we are talking about demand forecasting. So it's really uh, important not to look only at uh, the internal data, past data, historical data, but also the demand. And um, maybe here, yeah, I would like to know something about ideas. So what's different about ideas and how uh, do ideas clients mitigate risks uh, or find opportunities in all these chaos that we are seeing? <laughs> um, it's almost as though you know that I was in sales because it sounds like this is going to be a pitch. But um, to, be, to put it very simply, uh, Federica, the inflation or if it's a sudden mass cancellation or large group pickups um, or wash if, if you have that problem our systems have the ability to learn through a closed loop system so it informs our users if there is further adjustments that are needed um, if there is if the system needs more room to move if there's a need for it to be able to price more or price less if the hotel needs to do something to change alter the state of their business and because our systems are transparent it's able to paint very clear pictures about things like price sensitivities in the market. What's the demand's willingness to pay? And there are also a lot of controls here that help to accommodate those uncertainties. But before we get into controls, maybe let me just speak a little bit about how the forecast does that. The forecast takes into consideration how inflation prices can affect uh, the, the way you price your rooms, how your competitors are also trying to adjust to it. The system learns all of this and it then sends a price point out to the market and it monitors to see if that decision was a good decision or maybe even suboptimal. And from there, it feeds that information back into, uh, into its forecasting methodologies and decision-making algorithms. So in that sense, this is where that kind of workflow enables the hotels to accommodate the uncertainties and make sure that they are able to price taking all this into consideration. So this, uh, together with the whole array of dashboards uh, on performance metrics for both individual or cluster revenue managers helps to, to ease that or mitigate those risks. Yeah, and very interesting. And uh, we know that many hotels, uh, we speak to do a forecast. But it's what I see is that it's rare that new trends are constantly fed into the forecasting methodologies. And uh, you mentioned just before uh, uh, closed loop. Uh, does ideas do this? And if so, how so? So briefly, uh, very simply put, everything that the system puts out in decision making, it monitors to see how well that decision is performing. It also learns things like, how are the competitors down the street pricing? If there's any impact of those competitors on our clients, it looks at how the different market segments are interacting with each other. If I price differently um, on my bar pricing, will that affect my corporate rates and so on? And all that is constantly being learned. Oh, I forgot to mention also it learns the user's um, habits as well. So all of that put together into our system, the system learns all these different data points and it then adjusts its future forecast and pricing decisions. And that's what we mean by closed loop. So by doing so, our clients are always um, assured that they the system is taking the most relevant, most recent trends into account, as well as their needs and wants for their business. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you, Jan. Uh, we, are, we are running out of time, but it was uh, amazing to know about your point of views, about ideas. So uh, yeah, thank you from Funnel TV. 
and uh, thank you and uh, ideas and uh, see you soon. Bye.